All right, good morning. It's right just around 5 a.m. here in Calgary, and we're gonna do a focus on planks today. Now, the thing with planks, which is really interesting, is that we need to have a nice base of foundation between our shoulder blade and our arm bone, which means our shoulder blade and our rib cage. But then we also have our legs highly involved in the practice so that there's a connection between how the shoulder girdle functions and what goes down through the legs and through the feet. So we're gonna be playing around with all of that in this short practice. A note for those of you who have wrist and elbow issues, what I'd recommend is that you don't do the plank portion of this. Like when we get onto the hands, we, are, we will be doing some stuff on the forearms, but just, just check in. There's no point in pushing through something just because you can when it's actually not gonna support your function. So a lot in, inside of here that we're leading up towards those planks will be helpful for you, but just be really, really, um, honor your body. I mean, listen to your body, all that. And I'm happy to help you along the way with that, okay? All right, so where we're gonna begin is we're gonna use a strap and then I'd like you to have one or two blocks handy. We're gonna begin in standing. We're gonna take this strap and we're gonna place it around our elbows, having the loop of it about shoulder width apart. So when you place it up on your elbows, just above your elbows, that is what it looks like just above your elbows. You want to make it snug, but not so snug that you cut off any sort of blood or lymph flow or nervous communication or like electrical flow. So no full hands, no blue hands, no numb hands, that kind of thing. So we're here. Yeah, and then the hands are just gonna be beside you and feel where your feet are, the ball of your foot, the base of your pinky toe and the center of your heel. Feel those three points in the bottom of your feet. And then moving from this joint, arm bone in the shoulder socket, the glenohumeral joint, that arm is gonna come back both sides. But notice that my spine didn't go with it, my head didn't go this way, my pelvis didn't do this, <laughs> it's just my arms going back. Yeah, so we're articulating through that arm bone in the shoulder joint. So now if this has increased anything like um, numbness or tingling, then I would bring yourself back a little bit, maybe take the strap off. All right, let that go down. Now bend the elbows. So now watch the form. The form stays parallel to the floor. So watch to see if you wanna do this. Look in the camera. I would really recommend that because it's so easy to do that. And when that happens, watch what happens to my shoulder joint. See how I start to dip it forward, right? That's what we're not looking for. We're looking for exact same movement as we just did here, but now we're just bringing it back this way. So forearms are staying, are staying, um, what's the word, parallel to the floor. Good. Feel the three points in the bottom of your feet. It's like you're standing on a tripod between the center of the heel, the ball of the foot, and the base of the pinky toe. Okay, great. Let this come down. Good. Now just stand. Good, and notice what you feel. All right, now palms down. Elbows are gonna go wide, right? So the articulating joint is here, arm bone in the shoulder socket, palms facing down, we're just gonna go like so. So it's pulsing out, pulse, pulse. So you're gonna breathe out on the pulse. As the elbow goes back is when you breathe out. Okay, good. Now we're gonna do two out with palms down and then flip the palms, flip the palms. So palms are down. I'm gonna cut my head off so you can see this a bit more. There, pulse, pulse, that's it. Pulse, pulse, that's it. You can breathe out through your mouth, you can breathe out through your nose, it's totally up to you what you wanna do. There's obviously benefits and pros and cons to both. So just feel what makes sense for you and just overall how it feels from a nurturing type of sensation in your body. Okay, good, and then from here, let this settle out and then feel your feet. 
And now feel where you're at in your whole system. And we're going to feel the feet and we're going to take a side bend. So the weight's coming over into this leg, but you're still maintaining contact through the leg that you're leaning away from. I like the analogy of a, um, a teapot, whereas the water's coming out the armpit and then it's going down your um, inside of the arm. And there's a little teacup on the floor and it's filling up the teacup. Good, and then up, other side. Now watch with your head. I, I just kind of caught myself. Watch that your head doesn't lead it, that you're actually doing a side bend through your whole spine. And sometimes what can happen is, it can sometimes be a simply an awareness thing. Other times it can be, um, there's a limitation. And so then we lead with the head because there's something sticky and stuck somewhere along that lateral movement. Okay, great. We're gonna come down to the floor and we're gonna come onto our feet and then our knees. So it looks like this kind of motion, like that, okay? Now what you can do is you can place a block underneath your knees. Again, I'm gonna come up just a bit closer to the camera so you can see this. So you're on the forefoot of your feet when you're here and you can bring a block underneath so you remain on the forefoot. Lots of people make this a position where you come onto the toes and then you're pushing most of your weight through the toes which is really, really tricky for your knuckles and also those of you who have bunions. So if you can come onto the forefoot, it might not help the bunion. So if, the, if you've got bunions, I'm, I would, I mean, without seeing you, it's difficult to say don't do it, but you gotta feel into your feet if it makes sense, but I would lean over, if you're doubting, I would lean over on the side of coming out of it. But you're here, and the idea is just that your, your heels aren't splaying away from you, that you're coming down on top of those heels like so. And if this feels okay and you're on that forefoot of your foot, then you can always take yourself further into the position. I find that because I start to wear more footwear in the, um, the winter, my feet can get a bit tighter. So it's lovely to play with this, particularly when I'm doing my zooms most of the day. And, um, and also when we get into plank, getting this feel between the toes and the forefoot and the heel can be really, really lovely. Okay, now just to do this from the opposite standpoint, you're gonna take the, the bottoms of the feet, so dorsal side of the feet on the floor, pull that up towards the shins. So now you're using the muscles between your, your bones of your foot and then you're just going to sit down. Now watch, one thing that can happen is this, is sometimes as people feel the load coming onto their feet, they arch their back more. So if that starts to happen for you, maybe bring a couple of blocks over. Just pay, pay attention here without having to brace or do anything like that. Bring a bit more weight, a bit more weight, a bit more weight and just come right on top. Yeah. But if you need to come forward a bit and just be in a better position through your spine, and just be here, that's fine. And then as you feel like your feet can bear more load, then you can come up right on top. But the, there's space between your shin and the floor. So we're not in hero's pose or varasana. We are using our feet to support us, which can become really cool when we do our plank pose. Okay, let that go. All right, now we're gonna come onto hands and knees. Keep the hips up over top of the knee or close to that. We're gonna take the arms out like so. So we're not in child's pose. The bum is up, hips are up, and hands are out front. And then looking down at the floor. And then bring yourself out. So if that was 12 o'clock, bring the arms out to one or 11. So off to one side, a bit of a side bend. So you can see that a lot of this, we're not utilizing the wrists or the elbows and we're helping to reconnect connect with our body so a lot of it is very helpful for wrist and elbows even if you're not doing the the full plank part of this but it can be super super helpful okay and then come on back good same thing Okay, and then come into child's pose, arms straight out, and then up into tabletop. 
All right, take those toes under, just like we were doing a little bit ago. And we're just gonna move our hips towards our heels, and then we're gonna come back. So the movement, the feet stay where they are. You can think about bringing the heels back, like not like you're bringing them back, but that there's a little bit of, if you had your heels against a, a wall, and then imagine you're pressing those heels against, but not don't use a ton of effort. Just imagine that the wall is behind your heels. And you're moving through the hips and the shoulders. So you're not tucking in your abdomen or arching. We're not doing a, we're not doing a cat and cow. We're just moving through the hips and the shoulders. Okay, good. Now from here, this is one that I quite like, is we're just gonna lift the knees just maybe an inch off the floor. That's it. Okay, good, and then drop the knees. So we're moving from six points, hands, knees, and feet, into four points, hands and knees, sorry, hands and feet. So when you do that, your body's gotta take the load that was being borne by the knees into another part of your body. So lots of times people will feel the abdomen start to kick in as a result. I'm not a huge fan of bracing your abdomen first because when you brace first, it's like anticipation and then up, <laughs> anticipation, that is a new word. It's anticipation and then you're like brace and then lift and I prefer to train as a responsiveness. So as your knees lift, you'll probably feel your abdomen kick in. Other people will feel it up in their neck and their shoulders and all that and that just gives you an indication of either your awareness or coordination, but also perhaps of your function, right? So it might give you some indication about why your wrists feel the way they do or your elbows, which is great information. So now bring one leg back, good. And then we're gonna start to lift the knee again and now come into plank. You notice I didn't actually tell you we were doing plank. That was on purpose. Okay, and then come on down. All right, let's play with that one another time. Toes come under. Now we're gonna lift the knees. We're going to maintain this movement of the hips and the shoulders forward and back. Now, the tendency is people to lift their knees up. I want you to keep your knees right at the same level. You'll probably feel this in your quads a bit. That's the idea. Watch to see if you're creeping into your neck. Okay, knees drop. One foot back. This might change your plank a bit as you step the other foot back and see what you feel. Okay, good. And now let's poke up through the hips and the shoulders into a dog and then back to a plank. Good. And then up to a dog. Lovely. And then down to a plank. Okay. Drop your knees. Come onto your forearms. Okay. Toes are going to come under just as they are. And we're now going to drive a rocking movement through your heels. So your heels are going to drive it. Now I should say that your pelvis is level on the floor. So both the ASISs, so those are the little sticky outies on the front of your pelvis, and your pubic bone, those are, all three of those are touching the floor. And we're just moving through our ankles. I'm not pushing with my hands and my arms. I'm just getting the feel of my ankles here. Okay, good, and let that go. Come back into tabletop. Toes come under. Now you might feel your legs a little bit differently as you lift the knees. Good. Bring one foot back, then the other. There you go. And up to dog. And then back down. Up to dog. And back down. There you go. And then come into tabletop. All right, let's just notice where you're at. Let's take a moment. We're going to do a little shoulder work here just in case anything got up into your neck and your shoulder let's um bring this arm across your body and as you do that just don't go into that position try to make the movement of your arm through the horizontal plane good and then other side i'm going to stop talking because i might hit my mic here in a moment Great. Okay. I've got two blocks here. Now what becomes interesting with them, is we're going to do some work on forearms with our arms like this. Now 
what I find interesting is when I put the block here, you can see that it's a little narrow. If I put, my, put it right by the armpit here, you can see I've got this extra space here. Some of you have a little bit more of a narrow cage. So placing just one block here is going to be fine. But if I did that, my arms would be very narrow, right? You see that? They'd be very, very narrow. So I'm going to place this setup like this. So I've got a little bit wider of a base. So for those of you who are like me, you got a little bit more broadness compared to the block. You'll want to add a block um, or a half a block. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Okay. We're going to place that on the floor like so. And we're going to bring our arms into this position. So like this. So if not palms down, but the side of the hand, and then the, you'll feel this bony bit. Yeah, this is the ulna side of your arm. You'll feel this bony bit coming down to the pinky finger and up to the elbow. That's what's going to be on the floor. Okay. And the block, you're going to feel from the belt, probably about the palm of the hand to the forearm, right? So if I'm not, I don't like using the word brace because people can interpret that in an, in, a, in many ways that aren't intended. But the idea is that the block is going to be at the wrist to, to kind of brace it so it doesn't have to sickle. Yeah. And then watch that your elbows don't slide in. Good. Good. Okay, good. So then just be here. You don't need to squeeze the living bejesus out of the block. You can just hold it. You'll get plenty here. Okay. And then from here, you're going to take one foot back and then the other foot back. And then drop the knees for a moment. Good. Take a breather. And then notice where your arms went. Like as you were doing it, maybe the blocks, you don't like the blocks, so you can toss the blocks away if you want. But notice if you wanted to roll out on the arm. And this time, just be aware. Don't like, I don't want to say don't. I don't want to make you wrong. What I want to say is notice what your limb is doing as you come into it. And then instead of, just for fun, instead of like correcting it, come out of the position and then be a little bit more conscious, I think, mindful of as you add load as to when that turn happens, okay? So let me walk you through it a bit more. Because so much of what limits us sometimes in yoga is actually just an awareness and people notice the alignment go off and they automatically want to make a quick change. And so I'm, I'm suggesting something just a little bit different. So as I take one foot back, I'm now shifting up the way the load is through my body and I can already feel my arms taking a bit more weight. Then as I bring weight from that position and then I take my foot back, there's even more. So during those transitions, you might notice that you want to sink or your arms roll and so then people then try not to sink or they try to squeeze the blocks even more. So notice maybe as an idea that this is kind of the point that I'm making that I'm maybe not making being totally clear about is notice the position of your arms, bring one foot back and then notice as you shift from this position over to this position and you're taking more load, load is notice what happens with your arms and you don't need to sink, you don't need to you don't need to change the sinking, just stop midway. Stop before you sink, stop before you roll through the arms and get that strength there, get that coordination pattern, then lift the knee. Good, and then drop. So then the idea is, is you don't have to compensate with another cue or another movement pattern, you just stay in the pattern where you actually can load your system really well and then see what happens. And, and it's what's interesting is pretty quickly, you're actually able to do the movement. Let's do that again, okay? And then we'll come back into the hand plank. So you're here with your um, pinky side of the hand down onto the mat. And then you're here. And then as you start to lift off of this opposite leg, you might feel, you will feel more load. And so maybe you just stop here. Maybe that's where you stop and just stay. And then you might kind of go, oh, I've got this. And then you're here. But then you're not having to brace and, you know, over move and use way more effort than you need to. Good. And then drop your knees. 
Okay, good. Now leave that off to the side. Now from here, bring one foot back and now the other foot back. And now notice what your plank feels like. Being on your hands and then come into your dog and then back to your hands. Come into your dog and back to your hands. Good. Perfect. All right, let's come here. I'd love to know your experience. If you played around with that, that forearm plank, grab your strap. Um, if as you like, st if you noticed that you were someone who was like, you were sinking and then you're like, okay, it better not sink. And you avoided sinking, but you just didn't do that. And you just waited. I would love to know how that was for you. And I would love to know as you practice over the next few days and weeks, how that works for you. you you'll be amazed at how quickly the um, arms come overhead, how quickly you change. We have a, we, a yoga is just so like, it's, it's like almost like this, oh shit mode. Like, oh my God, we are sinking through the shoulders. We better stop sinking through the shoulders. And there's like this opposite action that then happens as opposed to really noticing what's contributing to the sinking. And really, when you want to be simple, 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 simple about it, it's in the trajectory of movement from point A, so from being on your knees and then stepping your foot back. There, it's, it's more often than not, a, just an awareness and coordination pattern. It's not even a strength issue. Because I see so often people, let's go the other way. I see so often people just gaining the understanding of how the movement is and then boom, they're there. Strength just didn't show up all of a sudden. It was always there. It just needed to be utilized better. Yeah. The function's already there. It's just not, it needs to be uncovered. Good. All right. Let that come down. Let's come back to a side bend. Big, big beach ball over here like so. And then if you want, take the arm up, but just check to see if that makes sense. You can stay here. You can stay here. You kind of feel for yourself what makes the most sense. Good. And then over to the other side. Okay, good. And then we're going to come into Eagle. So my, that my mic's here. So my arm's going to come across here. Good. And then let that go. Okay. Other side. All right. Lovely. Let that go. Okay. Now come into a twist. So nose and breastbone twist like so. Now, those of you who are in Susie's resource library, we are going to be, um, we're going to be doing a challenge in early December. So I'm giving you lots of notice now. <laughs> we're going to be doing a shoulders and hips challenge. Where I'm going to give you a whole series of practices that you can play with that are both um, great at improving mobility, um, but also improving your strength. So putting together so much of what you've been learning over the course of the year, we're going to just put it into some solid application. So you'll hear more about that as we turn into November. I'll give you lots of heads up about how that's going to go. Good. And then arms come wide. And if you want to become a member, well, of course, I would love you in there. Good. And then arms reach back. We don't open up registration very often. We're not like that kind of membership where it's like, oh, come join any month. That's not the way we run it. We're really interested in a certain kind of uh, process. That's really about learning and teaching. Okay, great. Okay, good. And then one arm comes up like so, other arm back. This is going to look a little like cow, yeah? 
See how that's gonna happen? So we're just gonna rotate the arm bone in the back, yeah, and then the forearm, and then like so. I'm not touching my hands on purpose. And then up, and then down and up. Great, and then here. Okay, and one last one. And then we'll call it a morning and we'll get on with our day, okay? So arms are gonna come up and then you might need to hold your strap a little taut so it doesn't dangle here, but don't pull it like you're pulling it apart, like you're pulling the threads all apart. And then we'll bring the, the strap down. Now you decide where it goes, right? Because what I'm doing is I'm taking the arm into extent, like I'm moving it backwards. It's not really extensions, it's actually going more into flexion. But I'm backing here and then I'm bringing the arms down like so. All right, so my head's not coming forward. That's the really tricky one. If you don't have the freedom in through the front of the shoulder, you will want to put that forward, your head forward or bring your ribs forward. So you, you, you might be up here and this is just where you're at. And then you might also be coming down behind here. And you might be here, you might be here, or you might be at your eyes. So many different places where you could be. Lovely, okay, great. And now just sit here and notice what you feel. And my heart to yours, thank you so much for joining me. I love doing these and I love that there's people who come and join me in the morning. So thank you and you have a really, really, really great day. If you're watching this at a later time in your day, you have a great time with these planks and we will see you tomorrow. Take care.